Hi everyone and welcome back. In this video I wanted to share a few procedural tips from shading to vex, hopefully you learned something new and you can always grab the project files from my Patreon. So I'm creating some simple procedural buildings and houses and the roof was the trickiest part. As you can see I'm aligning some grids to the roof shape so I can use the subdivisions to instance the tiles. And this is simple enough, here in a basic scene you can see the setup, starting with a grid with alternating triangles and moving up the middle point, computing the normals and extracting the centroid of the prims while transferring the normals along. Here I have the grid to copy over, which is laying flat on the ground. Now copying these over won't give us the desired result, but that it's quite simple to solve. We have the normals already, we just need to create the up attribute, pointing in the y axis. And then to align it properly, we need to rotate the grid 90 degrees, since by default whatever is facing the z axis will align with the normal of the points. And this works even with the largest side of the grid aligning properly. But curiosity got the best out of me and as I am stubborn I wanted to find a solution that didn't rely on the initial orientation of the grid. So as you can see in this setup I have exactly the same result, but no transform node, neither computed normals. And with a few lines of vex, we can calculate a new direction of the normal and use the same up attribute. First I am getting the topmost point with the bounding box max function, then calculating a vector by subtracting the current position from the top point, assigning that vector to the normal and using the same up attribute. As you can see by the visualizers, now the normal is pointing towards the center top point and up facing in the Y. And I still believe there's a, even a simpler way to achieve this, but that's what I came up with, waiting for your suggestions in the comments. Let's move on. Last year I did a shading tutorial using Arnold and Maya on creating this rainbow CD effect and wanted to try it in Karma. So we're starting with this type of ramp that we will map to the specular rotation at the end. Not gonna bother you with the map behind, but you can see the steps by my setup. The most important node here is the material X rotate 2D that will create the rainbow effect, basically offsetting a few degrees the ramp in each shader. Then I have three different materials where the only difference is the base color, one is red, second is green and third is blue. And finally I am adding them together that should add up to white while creating the rainbow effect on the reflection. For the shaders I just have the ramps connected to the specular rotation and in anisotropy and metalness set to 1. As a final touch I used the grunge texture on the roughness channel using a custom triplanar node. So procedural rocks, we all been there and in this basic setup I have a few tips. The first one is to use the initial shape, copy to a single point with a randomized scale attribute. This allows to change the size and shape of the rock by playing with the seed of the attribute randomize. Another quick tip on how to use a subdivide node to control the roundness of your rock, just by playing with the crease weight and adding one or two subdivisions. Let's add a mountain node to randomize the shape and let's say you don't like the effect on the Y axis, mostly on the bottom part. Of course you can remove the Y component on the mountain node, but that also gets rid of the noise on top. So what you can do is to create a point pop with a noise inside using the displace along normals nodes and to achieve the flattening just on the negative Y you can use a clamp on your normals, setting the Y component to 0 on min 
and the desired amount for positive y. Ok, now an exercise on stacking objects with for loops. In this case I have a simple box and using a for each count to generate more in a loop. And to align the boxes we access the previous iteration with a new begin node set this time to fetch feedback. Then we can use the result in a match size to align the new box with the previous one, in this case the bottom to the top or min to n max. And in between I'm also randomizing the rotation and scale with the iteration value. So I saved the worst tip for last and it's really simple, but since Aldini doesn't have a capsule primitive we can create one just with two nodes. A simple line, a sweep node set to rounded tube, and the end cap to grid. You can then control the height with the line and the subdivisions with the line points and grid subdivisions. So that's it, hopefully you got something out of this. Feel free to leave a comment and don't forget you can grab all the files from my videos on Patreon along with exclusive tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next one.